remember growing up it used to be so nice here so beautiful around here it's, uh, you know but that will never be again that will never happen again never that that's gone it's gone The water just came across the lake, like it just flooded me right out and my ports came off. When we were first notified that we were, we were being evacuated from our community and we were told we, were, we cannot take anything other than our, our very least bits of clothing. No one warned us that uh, our homes are going to be permanently destroyed and damaged. In May 2011, Lake St. Martin First Nation Reserve was inundated by a devastating but avoidable flood. Lake St. Martin First Nation, a community of 2,000 people, was permanently displaced. The Anishinaabe people of Lake St. Martin have lived here for many generations, since time immemorial. The community was a thriving cultural hub, and people loved to dance, do beadwork, and other cultural crafts. Women would get together to prepare the fishing nets, and men made canoes for the fishers to catch fish with. After settlements started in the mid-1850s, the fishing industry provided an income for the Anishinaabe as well as sustenance. Back in the 50s, 40s, when they used to go hunting, and they just had to go, go within the community to go get their most deer. That's how abundant it was, and now we can't even find anything nearby. Lake St. Martin was once home to the buffalo and other hunting and agricultural activities. People lived well and sustainably. In 1961, the first water control structure was constructed at the mouth of the Fairford River to protect Lake Manitoba cottagers and farmers from flooding. This impacted downstream communities, including Lake St. Martin First Nation, without warning or consultation. Slowly, the water levels rose, and more water was sent into Lake St. Martin, creating annual flooding in the spring. In 1970, the second water control structure, the Portage Diversion, was constructed to keep the city of Winnipeg safe and dry. This elevated the water levels even more. I worked in that diversion they made in Portage La Prairie back in 1969. But I didn't know that it was going to affect me later on in life. You know, what are you supposed to live on now? We can't live here, we can't come back here. The, the land is, is no good anymore. Everything was okay. And then on come now, when we had flood, everything was okay. But not the same way we could The last nail in the coffin for Lake St. Martin First Nation was the 2011 water channel from Lake St. Martin to Big Buffalo Lake. 
The channel is going to destroy our fishing industry, our, uh, our, uh, our uh, hayland, our culture is going to be destroyed. Uh, it's been destroyed already, it's a total write-off. But the province and the feds are not sitting at the same table as the First Nation. The fishing economy is destroyed because they built the channel. Uh, they used the Emergency Measures Act to build the channel. And uh, with the Emergency Measures Act, it says there that you don't have to consult the people, you don't have to you don't have to do an environmental assessment because they say emerg emergency natural, but this is not natural. This has been ongoing since the water control structure was built. It's been over 50 years now. There's nothing natural about that. It's an artificial flood. As the water levels increased each year, so did the poverty of Lake St. Martin First Nation, with the community growing poorer each year but keeping its social cohesion, culture, and housing. At the time of the 2011 flood, the community was visibly poor, with little infrastructure. Our school um, was uh, shut down because of mold, and then we, we were uh, giving these trailers to use temporarily, but that was nine years ago. So behind me are the classroom trailers we've been using. It's always wet, always wet, and even the, the classroom trailers too are cold and they're damp, you know, you can feel it on the floor. Gypsumville, located approximately 10 kilometers from Lake St. Martin, with a population of 100 people, has paved roads, full grocery, a hardware store, fire hall, hotel, post office, police station, provincially funded ambulance service, and a town hall. Lake St. Martin lacks these services and infrastructures due to the restrictive Indian Act and provincial policies that discriminate against First Nations. We used to have a school too, but that's been, uh, that's been destroyed as well because they built it on a site in a snake den. In 2011, Lake St. Martin, the water peaked at 806 feet, almost three feet higher than the historic peak of 1955. The KGS provincially funded report reads, if no action is taken, extremely high water levels on Lake Manitoba and Lake St. Martin are expected to continue for an extended duration leaving communities' homes damaged from flooding, wind, and waves. We've been flooded for so many years already. 55 years and that's the same thing. Look at it, it's worse now. It's no good. Where are you going to build a house around here? The land is no good anymore. It's really uh, devastating. My mom's house is completely surrounded by water now. I was up with Merle two weeks ago. And we had a look uh, and we met a number of people. We saw a lot of mold inside uh, several of the homes. And much of the land in which this community is living is in, in what we now call a marsh. And I think that that's been a con big contributing factor to the mold problems, which many people of the, in the community have experienced. The water is coming from the lake, but as well, it's coming from up from underneath because uh, the wa uh, the land is is completely saturated. It's really saturated now. When you walk on 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 what looks like dry land, if you walk on it, it's not really dry. It's wet. It's wet here. It looks dry, but it's wet. They want to do more hydro projects where they can make money on our water. You know, our lands are flooded while they make money on us. Now they're sitting back and, and as we're suffering, we're displaced from our homes. Like we're, we're, we're like refugees. It's, it's not right that the government doesn't listen, you know, doesn't take care of the problems that they created for years and years. At the Assembly of First Nations, Special Chiefs Assembly, Resolution 73 was passed on December 6th, 7th, and 8th, 2011. Article 10. Indigenous peoples shall not be forcibly removed from their lands or territories. No relocation shall take place without the free, prior, 
an informed consent of the indigenous peoples concerned, and after agreement on just and fair compensation, and where possible, with the option of return. Was everything that you had destroyed? What's happened now is our community has been evacuated and um, the majority of the children are in Winnipeg in hotels. It's very traumatic, I think, for the children and the staff. Over 2,000 people are still evacuated in the summer of 2012 without a land base. People are so depressed and traumatized that Lake St. Martin people have been touched by suicide. There's nothing for them, there's no hope for them. They give up hope so they uh, do their own lives. I wasn't ready. I just left everything behind. I was moved to two hotels, only one room. And there was three of us. There was not enough room for me. Me and my, me and my husband and granddaughter, we be not trying to The first two weeks of staying in a hotel was okay. It was like a holiday, but five months, six months. It's not a holiday anymore. It was very small, no place to move around. Very lonely and depressing. Last summer was the last time I came here. I came here, I think, in uh, July or August at the height of the flood. We came back for the pictures today and the personal our memories that we have when growing up. I don't know where I am. 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 I this is impacting our family relationship as well. You know, our children, my wife, we argue more than we ever did. And I, I know a lot of people are going through the same thing. Our house is totally finished from the flood. We've lost our traditional way of life, but we've also lost our culture. Against the people's wishes and consultation, the province chose to flood and temporarily relocate the community to an abandoned military base. The community voted on a permanent site for economic, cultural, and environmental potential, but the province overruled and disempowered the community. The two parcels of land selected by the community were inexpensive at 79,000 and a million respectively. So why would the province take federal disaster assistance funds to pay out 40 million on this internment camp when the permanent site could have been constructed which would have saved money? 
province is trying to dictate to us where uh, the First Nations should go. But in red, this is our traditional area, Treaty 2 area. It's all right wherever we can go, and it's not up to the federal department or the province. Um, First Nations are not involved with the study. It's a one-sided study. Meanwhile, uh, they're not using the people's knowledge or the traditional knowledge of the people who grew up on the land is very important. It's not obvious to the outsider, but the people who live here know because it's very subtle. Uh, the water is coming up every year. It's, it's getting worse. It's better than nothing, but it's very hazardous here. As you can see, there's lots of roots coming out, uh, wires coming out from the ground, steel, scrap, all over, and nails are all over the ground. One kid broke her arm yesterday. It's very dangerous to live here. Kids have to watch out. I believe if we stand together in unity, we know we'll get stronger and stronger. Lake St. Martin First Nation is working on a plan for a sustainable model community that is walkable with renewable energy and cultural significance. It wants all the infrastructure and services that exist in its neighboring town. This is our proposal plan for our higher ground community, our reserve. We, already, we are already planning where the buildings are going to be. One is for commercial site. We're, uh, we're talking about having a gas bar and a convenience store. There's a school here, band school office, store, health center, fire station, a heating plant, yeah. laundry mat. Red the school is there, the playground. We were hoping that this will be a reality for our people to live here. At the Southern Chiefs Organization, Chiefs in Summit, held May 1st and 2nd, 2012, Resolution 5 was passed, which reads, There has been no needs assessment or comprehensive community plan for any flood-impacted community that considers cultural integrity, healthy living, and natural resources and economic development for sustainability. The flood of 2011 at Lake St. Martin First Nation was artificial, but with real dire consequences. The community was permanently displaced from their homes, losing their livelihoods, health, and socio-cultural integrity. The government chose to use the control structure to flood people with a deep history to the land compared to people that only had economic and recreational interest. There's been no compensation for the community or people yet. The non-First Nations have already been compensated. How dare the province, after flooding them out of their ancestral home without consultation, not listening to their demands for a permanent home and placing them in an internment camp at an old military base that lacks infrastructure. The government is playing with people's lives and wasting taxpayers' money by not supporting Lake St. Martin First Nations' sustainable and permanent model community. <laughs>